amazing revelation has been discovered. But first, let us begin with the ancient Sumerian story. Enki, though brilliant, was a spoilt child, jealous of his brother in love, and wanting a kingdom of his own. When Nibiru was faced with the crisis of loss of atmosphere, the Anunnaki decided to mine gold on the earth to reseed their atmosphere. Enki saw it as an opportunity to grab power. He fomented a worker revolt, knowing that he could use Nibiru's emergency to force the council to accept anything. Enki wanted a world filled with slaves that he could rule over, which is something neither the council nor the Anunnaki would have ever allowed. But Enki was shrewd. He convinced the council that Nibiru would die if the gold-seeded atmospheric shield was delayed. He convinced them that the workers would not return to duty as they were following his orders since he was in charge of the mining operation. He convinced the council that the only solution was to create a non-sentient species out of the highest order ape available to do the labor, but make them incapable of reproduction so they would naturally die off. The council saw no alternative so they reluctantly and conditionally agreed and they allowed Enki to carry out the plan. But Enki pulled a fast one and gave the new species the ability to breed, wanting a permanent stock of slaves for his planned kingdom. Enki went even further. He didn't just manipulate the ape's DNA but he actually infused Anunnaki DNA into the mix. This would give him slaves that he would find attractive and acceptable to be in the company. Enki did this both in the laboratory and also allowing his loyal striking workers to inseminate the females he created. This we find in Genesis 6, which led to the Nephilim. When Lord Anu and his son, Lord Enlil, learnt of this treachery, Enlil was sent to the earth to correct his brother's sin against the universe, as the Anunnaki have very strong moral code. Enlil took over on earth and brought Enki to justice, but it was too late. Enki had created several abominable and potentially dangerous seed lines, all without an Anunnaki spirit and without an Anunnaki morals and virtues. These were savage slaves that resembled the Anunnaki but were violent beasts. The council decided that such an abomination must never be allowed to progress because they would be a cancerous infestation to the universe and a danger to any other species they encountered. But because of Anunnaki morals, the genocide of a related race was nearly unthinkable. So they decided to let a natural event destroy this abomination. They knew that Nibiru's next close pass by the earth would cause massive flooding, wiping out the abomination they decided to let it happen. Enki didn't want to lose this opportunity to have a kingdom of his own, so he went against the orders of the council and protected segments of his created beings from the flood. When the council learned of this, they were livid and Enki paid a price for his treachery. But this left a growing species that was still as dangerous as ever. Satan, a reptilian, petitioned the council to eradicate man, so the threat would 
be contained. But man's true saviour, Lord Enlil, who was Lord Rael, fought against Satan in front of the council on behalf of man. Lord Enlil argued that man was part Anunnaki and therefore possessed the divine spark. And if properly educated and nurtured, they could one day be equals. Satan vehemently disagreed, asserting that a species cannot be taught to have morals, that the law of love is either written in their hearts or it is not. The council found logic in both sides of the argument and offered a compromise. Since Satan was man's chief accuser, he and his people would be allowed to utilize part of Lord Enlil's plan to educate, but at the same time, weed out those that would not be capable of evolving. The plan would give Satan a set amount of time to fulfill this directive, after which he was to hand over the earth to its rightful custodians, the Anunnaki, at which point those that were considered evolvable would be educated and nurtured under the Anunnaki for a period of 1,000 years before becoming full and free members of the council themselves. All sides reluctantly agreed, but Satan did not believe that man should ever be allowed into the universe, and he developed a very cruel system to cause man to live, die, live, die and be trapped in this cycle so that man would forget the lessons he had learned and he would have to start from scratch after each incarnation. Satan then created a group to dominate man, giving them the knowledge man lost between incarnations. This group was given an infusion of reptilian DNA so they would be more intelligent and less compassionate and thus be better equipped to dominate the Anunnaki seed line, which is human. When Lord Enlil learnt of this, he went before the council stating that this is no better than what Enki did. The council disagreed stating that man was most likely going to be destroyed anyway so if Satan needed to do something unconventional that may help man accelerate in his progress, what was the harm? The harm was lesser Anunnaki souls being chartered in a death-rebirth cycle that was not going to fulfill the plan of man's evolution. Lord and Lil took matters into his own hands. Lord Enlil had a staging area set up on the planet within the Anunnaki Empire where souls would come between lifetimes, have their past life reviewed and recorded and then have them returned to the earth for their next incarnation. This ensured that the lessons of each lifetime would not be lost and that the memories could be reinfused if necessary so each person would have the total value of all their life lessons gained over all their lifetimes. He then had to open a path for these souls to escape Earth on death, so they could come to the staging area. This is why he came to the Earth 2000 years ago, as the Christ, to open the light tunnel and save the souls of man. Lord Enlil has incarnated more than once here to ensure that man's path remains on course to apotheosis. Now let us delve deeper into this ancient account. Let us consider this from the perspective of Lord Anu. If you were a father of two boys and one did something very bad that caused him to be cast out creating a situation that his brother had to repair and provoking a long and contentious rift between the two siblings. 
you might try create a redemptive path by which your prodigal son may return to honor while formatting a situation that would bring the brothers back to each other's love. It seems that Lord Un has done exactly this. A number of people have asked if Enki was reincarnated, and if so, where he is presently located. In the not so distant past, we were unsure, and yet occasionally offered limited speculation. The general public was advised that the Holy King's imperial regent was not at liberty to gossip about a royal within the Holy Family. However, the Torah Code has now revealed his true identity. It must be said that Enki is not an evil being. He simply allowed ambition to get the better of his judgment, leading him to violate an ethical restriction of the Anunnaki. If he hadn't performed that violation, none of you would be here today. So in the same way one looks at a deadly hurricane with great umbrage, one must also remember that the hurricane will bring forth water and blossom to the desert. The royals have incredibly high moral standards, so if they were going to allow Enki back to a place of honor, receiving absolution for his sin, he would have to perform an immense penance that would humble him while demonstrating that his divine right to rule was not lost through his transgression. But for this to be genuine, his penance would have to be served in the dark, keeping the truth hidden from him or anyone who could possibly interfere in any way, including his brother in law who we know as Lord Raya. So Enki was forced to come to earth over and over again, living and suffering with each generation of man, so he could feel their pain and gain the perspective of the agony and unenlightened sentient life must endure through its evolutionary ascension. Only in this way could he fully understand why the unauthorized creation of sentient beings is a great sin among the membership of the council. Enki endured the pain each time, suffering greatly, but simultaneously helping man grow in greatness, even giving man the laws that would become the foundation for all of the great societies of earth, which was no small task when walking through a desert for 40 years. Yes, Enki is Moses. Enki is Cardinal Richard Ruff. And only because we are at the very end of days, God has revealed this long hidden truth to him. Because our brother has made it through this terrible penance and has victoriously overcome this ancient transgression, he has earned the right to share our Lord's throne. Revelation 3.21 And I shall grant the overcomer to sit with me on my throne, just as I have overcome and sit with my father on his throne. The clues were always there, like Richard Ruff's personal Torah codes, referring to him as a criminal while also calling him Lord Rael's brother, or the Jewish tradition that says Moses returns each generation, or that he wasn't allowed to enter the Promised Land after all he endured during the Exodus, or Lord Rael's mysterious promise of Revelation 3.21. Because the royals are not known for sharing planetary rulership with anyone outside the divine line. No matter how meritorious their service to the crown has been. Enki is divine. The Bible says that Enki will sit with the Lord upon his throne 
So this indicates a somewhat subordinate position, but this can be called co-rulership. Enki will be third in royal succession. Lord Anu, Lord Enlil, who was Lord Rayan, Lord Enki, who was Cardinal Richard Ruff. The royal tree of Lord Anu hath bed double fruit with two wonderful sons who for a time were segregated from each other but are now being reunited in their grand mission. It is a glorious day for a family reunion and reconciliation and we are all immensely proud of Cardinal Richard Ruff. Praise be to God. The Torah codes have confirmed this fantastic discovery just in time to prepare for the great day of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>